What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and we're gonna continue our summer months of cooling series, something I do every single summer, and something I've always wanted to test, I've never had the opportunity till now, is a cross-flow radiator versus a standard dual-pass radiator, and which one is actually better, or does it make a difference at all? Hopefully, we can find out today and put all of the uh, guesswork to bed. Is that the right, is that how you say that stuff? I don't know, we're gonna test it. Today's video is sponsored by Audible and these summer months are known as the travel months and that has definitely been true for me this summer. In fact, next week I am heading on vacation to Washington DC and that is a five and a half hour plane ride. So I'm gonna be listening to a new title personally. I'm a huge fan of their self-help section and I'm gonna be checking out Barking Up the Wrong Tree by Eric Barker. It's the surprising science behind why everything you know about success is mostly wrong. But Audible has a huge library of pretty much any type of book that you can imagine, self-help, romance, science and technology, fiction. And the best part about Audible is every single month you get credit for a free book that is yours to keep regardless of price. But right now, if you sign up for Audible using my link in the description below, that's audible.com slash Jay's Two Cents, you get a free audio book and a 30-day free trial. And if you happen to be an Amazon Prime member and sign up in the month of July, you get three months for the price of one. So what are you guys waiting for? Head to audible.com slash jays 2 cents or just text jays 2 cents to 500-500. Okay, so huge thanks to AlphaCool for sending me these radiators. Both of these are, I believe, ST30. They're 30 mil thick rads. They're the same fin density. They're the exact same core. The only difference here, obviously, is the end tanks and the way that the fluid flows. Now, for you to understand what we're testing here, basically, a cross-flow radiator, you can see all the fluid goes in one side, it goes through all the different rows at the same time and then exits on the opposite side. So it makes one pass through the radiator. Where a dual pass radiator, which you see right here, which is what like 95% or more of the radiators on the market are, enter in one fitting, they go through half of the radiator, they make a 90 degree turn down here at the end of the radiator and go back the other way and then exit. So basically the fluid is only actually running through half the rad at one time in either direction and so basically, if you took this radiator, split it down the middle and stretched it out, that's what the cross flow on it would look like. So theoretically, what you're gonna get here is also two different pressure drops. This would have a lot less pressure buildup in the radiator because you have way more flow, whereas this is going to have a little bit more pressure, but the fluid is gonna spend a little more time in the radiator. So the true test here is whether or not having half the flow rate, but twice the time spent in the radiator, versus twice the flow rate and half the time, theoretically, I don't think the math is linear like that, but pretty close, we're gonna see if there's any sort of differences. But first, we've gotta actually fill these rads, and that's the best part about having quick disconnects like this, is you can easily just change out components and stuff. Now, one of the things we're gonna be testing here is not just CPU with my 8700K, we're also gonna hook the Poseidon up to it and see, uh, how it does when we actually saturate the radiator. I don't think either the Poseidon or the CPU on its own is going to exceed the thermal capacity of either of these two setups. So that's why we're gonna try both independently and then we're gonna put it all together as one loop and we're gonna see how well it actually does. And then maybe we'll put both radiators together and see if it makes a brings the temps down even more. Um, that's, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But now we're just gonna fill up this rad nice and easy. That's the best part about having these uh, quick disconnects is you can see just how easy it is to fill up. It's nice. See, we can easily get all of our air out of there. So we're just gonna do this now for all of my components, which is gonna make it really easy for me to obviously switch out these parts for these tests. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our baseline test. That's gonna be with these standard cross flow, or not cross flow, but dual pass radiator that we're all used to. I'm also using two Corsair SP120 quiet edition fans, which are maxed at 1200 RPM. They are running 100% because we are testing the full cooling capability and thermal capacity of these radiators in their current configs. I'm also running just the 8700K in the loop right now. We'll add the GPU to it in a moment, but we're gonna let the temperature and the fluid temp equalize over here using OCCT medium data sets on our 8700K. That is technically not overclocked, but it does have a sync all cores going, which means all cores are running at the turbo clock, not just the, the two cores that are being tasked with the, whatever the, the most intense thread is. So it's a slight overclock just in that all the cores are allowed to, to ramp up. So we're gonna let the temperature kind of equalize, see however long that takes, and then we're gonna hook up the GPU to it, and that will be our baseline with just these standard 
type of radiator. Now, I usually will recommend a single 120 per component if you just want water cooling and you're not planning on overclocking, you want it for the sake of being quiet. Uh, that's why you also see GPUs will ship with the AIOs uh, attached with a single 120 rad, because for GPUs too, that's just more than enough. So having a 240 on here is uh, kind of the upper limit of where I would push the thermal capacity of radiators. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing this test too. So if we do both CPU and GPU on one radiator, and then we get a significantly different result on another type of radiator that's the same size with the same components, well then we can draw our conclusions from that. So that is our methodology. We're gonna let the temperatures do their thing and we'll come back when we do our switch. All right, so it's been running for just under 20 minutes. If you look at the max temps right here, these are the spikes. Every now and then, if you take a look at the chart right there, see how that just spiked up really high and came right back down? These are those spikes and, and this isn't really indicative of the, the total experience. I mean, you can see most of these are in the upper 80s, one core is in the low 81C, but all the way up to 89C on one of the cores. But if we look at the real time, this is what we care about. And just like I was expecting, it's sitting anywhere in the 60s to the mid 70s. And then our actual CPU socket is sitting at 72C. So these are the numbers we care about right here. And it's been running long enough now for the loop to have equalized. In fact, the radiator is not even that warm. It's just because we do have more thermal capacity in that rad than what's actually making it out of the CPU. And we talked about that, how delitting, and that's why people do it. Um, this is not a delitted CPU. This is still very indicative of what buying one and just putting it in a PC would be like. It's one of the reasons why I, have, I do not delid my stuff when I do these tests is because then that doesn't really tell you the whole story. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna add the GPU to the loop and we're gonna see what the max GPU temp is gonna be. I'm expecting it to probably be in the mid to upper 40s, possibly even the low 50s. I'm not entirely sure. Um, remember this is a Poseidon, so it's not like your typical full cover block. It is a full block on here, um, but it's not like an EK water block or anything like that, which is uh, usually gonna be a little bit better. But the reason why we're using the Poseidon, it's the only way we're gonna be able to do a direct apples to apples comparison, because if we don't have it hooked up into the loop, like if we took one of my just full water cooled cards, then we'd be switching GPUs back and forth all day long. And I think if we're just using one setup that doesn't change, it gives us a better example of what to expect. Now I'm gonna try and actually do this with it running. I'm wondering if I can do this fast enough. Okay, here we go. And turn it back on. Oh, I never even got past like the 40s. <laughs> okay, well, now the GPU is in the loop. You can see it all flowing. Yeah, so quick disconnects. All right, so look at this right here. You see all this crazy up and down? Something ran in the background for a second there, but we're back to normal. Um, 47C is where we capped out on the um, U-Flow, double pass, whatever radiator you want to call it. I mean, it's pretty standard rad. And remember our CPU was at uh, high 60s, low 70s. So now we're going to run the exact same test on the cross floor. I think it just hit 48 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let this coolant come back down though. I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna let it cool off. And my predictions, I really do not think anything is gonna change. I think we are gonna get the exact same results. And I kinda of hope I'm wrong, but that's my prediction. I think we're gonna get the same results. Um, yeah. Something else worth pointing out though is we stayed well below the temperature threshold where the fans on the Poseidon will actually turn on. So everything cooling wise was down specifically to the radiator. All right, now we can switch it. Been running for 20 minutes, and I gotta tell you, it looks pretty much the same. Actually, if you look at this, I'm seeing more 60s than 70s, if I recall. Maybe Phil can put up a side-by-side, -side, but this appears to be maybe just a couple of degrees lower. But if we look at the spikes in Tempso, one of the cores did actually hit 90, and I think the spikes might be overall slightly higher. But this is not enough for us to actually be able to draw a conclusion, does Crossflow cool better or worse than a standard double pass radiator? So you know the routine, we gotta put it under load with the GPU. We know that graphics cards will saturate and have much more focused heat because the block is in direct contact with the GPU die. We're talking way more wattage, 250 plus watts on this graphics card versus about 100 watts or so on the CPU. So that's what really makes these tests uh, more beneficial to do with a graphics card. So I'm, again, I'm gonna try and do this with it running. 
So that's the in, that's gonna be unaffected. This is the out. And, oh, I need to turn off the pump, that would have been bad. You were hoping, you were gonna let me do it. Okay, there we go, there we go. Yeah, I'm getting good at this. There needs to be a, there needs to be a competition for this. So you can do this faster and better and stuff. Same drill as before, Heaven Benchmark 4K 8X MSAA. It's been running now, it's not going up any higher, and we are at 47C, the exact same clock we were at before, 100% on the GPU, and here is the cross-flow radiator. So, you know, I think here, here's the deal. Um, maybe a 120 radiator might show a slight difference. I don't know. I don't even know if they make a cross-flow 120 if you wanna know the truth, but here is uh, kind of my takeaway from this. You cut these end tanks off. The core between both of these radiators is identical. They are the exact same core, which is ultimately what's gonna be giving us our thermal capacity of the loop. Now, this being within margin of error, the exact same number as this one, tells me that the nice thing about the crossflow radiator is you have an option. If I were doing a small form factor build, there are times I would love a crossflow radiator because the radiator itself becomes the relocating of a fitting. So you don't have to have a tube going across the case to bring it into another component or to your rad, or well, not to your rad, but to your pump or your reservoir or whatever. I would love to use this in small form factor. The only caveat to that is if you look, you have a much smaller end tank on the side of the standard 240 versus the crossflow. These both stick out the approximate thickness of where the fitting is, which could then kind of count, be counterproductive in the whole concept of using it in a crossflow or a small form factor case. Now, my theory on why this is, I think has been kind of proven here, is that yes, we are actually spending less time in the radiator because it's flowing through much more quickly, but you have much less pressure drop, which means that the actual flow rate is increased. So if you flow through the radiator less per pass, but you get more passes per minute, it's still the same. So that is, that's my theory as to why this doesn't show any difference. So the reason why we did this video is when I asked Alpha Cool if there was any thermal difference to this or any temperature difference, they went, we actually don't know. Why don't you test that for us? So that's why we did this. So guys, thanks for watching. Uh, summer is one of those times I love to do a lot of cooling videos. And since I have inspired so many people to water cool, I wanna get as much information out there as I can. So if you have a suggestion for a video that we should do regarding summertime temps and keeping your system in check, Put it in the comments below, or better yet, tweet it to me at Jace Two Cents on Twitter. Guys, thanks for watching, and as always, we will see you in the next one. Like I can't even find a pixel. It's like ah. Speed and set. Okay, we're running. What?